Next is elimination reaction. Elimination reaction. It is called dehydrohalogenation reaction. <coughs> an alkyl halide treated with an alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide. It will give you dehydrohalogenation reaction. <coughs> it is also called a beta elimination reaction as hydrogen atom is uh, removed from beta carbon. Let us talk about the elimination reaction involved in alkyl halides. If you take an alkyl halide CH3, CH2Br when treated with uh, an alcoholic solution of KOH, you can see this bromine and one of the hydrogen atom from here will be removed and you get a double bond over here. You get CH2, double bond CH2 plus HBr. In fact, how the reaction happening exactly is, you look at this, this is the CH3 and this is CH2 and Br. When treated with a, an alcoholic solution of KOH, please understand this bond will go a heterolytic cleavage, removing Br minus along with the K plus out as KBr. Okay. Meanwhile, the base OH minus will be attacking on beta hydrogen. This is alpha carbon and this is beta carbon. So, the base OH minus attacks on beta hydrogen and this pair of electron is switched to this area between carbon carbon and you get a carbon carbon double bond and this OH with H out as H2O imagine you will get CH2 double bond CH2 <coughs> CH2 double bond CH2, you get uh, ethene. The reaction called uh, dehydrohalogenation reaction. From alpha carbon, halogen is removed, and from beta carbon, hydrogen is removed and is known after that name. In fact, we can call it as alpha beta elimination, popularly called uh, beta elimination reaction. From where the hydrogen is eliminated is known with the, that name, beta elimination reaction. Beta hydrogen is eliminated. So, is known with the, that name. So, from alpha carbon, halogen is out with the K plus minus KBr and from beta carbon, hydrogen is out and you get a double bond over that region. That is the elimination reaction and we call it as dehydro halogenation reaction dehydro halogenation reaction right that is elimination reaction and there is a point of discussion coming in case of unsymmetrical alkyl halides suppose we take unsymmetrical alkyl halides ch3 chbr ch2 ch3 that is 2-bromobutane taken for example, 2-bromobutane, secondary butyl bromide taken for example when treated with a, an alcoholic solution of KOH. Please understand, aqueous KOH if you take, there will be substitution reaction. Alcoholic KOH will provide elimination reaction. And here the point is, we have alpha carbon from which halogen is out and is out as KBr with the potassium. And here we have beta carbon here as well as beta carbon here. This is beta 1 and this is beta 2. There are two beta carbon atoms. So from where the hydrogen will be eliminated, whether the base OH minus is going to attack on this beta hydrogen and thereby you get a double bond over 1 2 carbon product number 1 you get CH2 double bond CH CH2 CH3 that is 1 butane are you going to get this product 
or the base is going to attack over this beta hydrogen, beta 2. Thereby you get a double bond over 2, 3 carbon. Second product, you get CH3, CH double bond CH, CH3, 2 butane. So, which will be the major product? Is it base attacking over here or is it base attacking over here, giving the respective product 1 or 2? In fact, I think all of you know, you get both the products, you get both the products, you get both alkene. Then which is major product? Major product is explained according to Seychef rule and this is major product. And this will be only minor product. Most substituted alkene dominates. Right? Very famous ruling. What is the rule? Seychef rule. Seychef rule. This is called a Seychef rule. Seychef rule. According to Seychef elimination, when unsymmetrical compound undergo elimination reaction, the obtained alkene, which alkene is obtained as major product, it will be most substituted alkene. Because that is more stable. What is meant by most substituted alkene? Many of you know, but some of you may be having a doubt. What is meant by this most substituted alkene? You look at this, this is alkene. Here, this is alkene. What is meant by most substituted? Which is most substituted among the two? This having a substituent ethyl group. While this having a substituent 2-methyl group. This is more substituted. The second alkene is most substituted. There are two substituents. And that is pretty more stable. And that's why that comes as a major product. Which also can be explained by hyperconjugative structures also. Thus, that has two hyperconjugative structure, two alpha hydrogen atom. Here you have three plus three, six hyperconjugative structures. There are six alpha hydrogen atom. So, one butane, two butane, among one butane, two butane, two butane will be the major product. And this is called Seychef elimination. And this is referred as Seychef rule. What is Seychef rule? Uh, when unsymmetrical compound undergoing elimination reaction, the major product will be most substituted alkene, that is Seychef elimination, right? <clears throat> so, this is what something important to be noted in case of elimination reaction. So, if you take aqueous solution of KOH, there will be substitution reaction. If you take alcoholic solution of KOH, there will be elimination reaction. It is in fact alpha beta elimination it is called beta elimination reaction, dehydrohalogenation reaction. Is it clear? Right. There is always a point of discussion between substitution and elimination. There is always a point of discussion between substitution and elimination. See, there is a point of uh, competition between substitution and elimination. If you take alkyl halide treated for the reaction, sometimes it may be substitution reaction, sometimes it may be elimination reaction. So, whether substitution happens or whether elimination happens, that depends on the nature of the molecule, that depends on the nature of the reagent. Many factors, the medium, the conditions, many factors will decide whether it is going to be substitution reaction or elimination reaction. If it is elimination reaction, you get alkene. If it is substitution reaction, you get a suitable substitution product according to what we have seen few minutes back, including mechanism, SN reaction, SN1, SN2 mechanism and whole lot of examples. It's, uh, it's about some 14 examples we have seen from that uh, table, right? See, <coughs> for example, a pictorial, beautiful pictorial representation is given for elimination versus substitution. You see, here the demonstration is based on the nature of the reagent. This is a, this is a base, sorry. 
this is a base and this is acting as a base while this is a base which will act as a nucleophile so both are bases both are bases in one case this base is acting as a uh, base this is acting as a base while here the base is acting as a nucleophile and when it acts as a nucleophile means it is going to attack on alpha carbon this is alpha carbon from where the halogen is expelled and the nucleophile attacks and that is substitution meanwhile meanwhile the halogen goes and this is alpha carbon while a bulkier group which is not now acting as a nucleophile rather it act as a base simply capture hydrogen from beta carbon this is beta carbon it is capturing hydrogen from beta carbon and this electron comes over here to make a carbon carbon double bond this is elimination reaction a simple point to understand between substitution and elimination very simple point if the reagent attacking species attack on alpha carbon it is substitution and there it act as a nucleophile if it is attacking on beta hydrogen it is elimination there it simply act as a base in fact a base and nucleophile identical species identical character when it is attacking on alpha carbon the base is referred as nucleophile and that is substitution reaction when it is attacking on beta hydrogen capturing beta hydrogen it will be elimination reaction and it is not uh, called as a nucleophile it will be acting as a base and that is the point of difference between substitution and elimination mainly if you take tertiary halides tertiary halides are highly prone to elimination reaction tertiary halides are highly prone to elimination reaction rather than substitution reaction so depending on the nature of alkyl halide depending on the nature of the group attacking this is a bulky unit which is not interested to attack on the interior rather it is interested to capture a proton from the periphery from the beta carbon that is elimination while this is a simple nucleophile it act on the alpha hydrogen alpha carbon that is substitution reaction so if the attack happens on alpha carbon it is substitution reaction if the attack happens on beta hydrogen it is elimination reaction it is as simple as that hope it is clear keep it in mind a tertiary halide is highly prone to elimination reaction rather than substitution and there always exist a competition between substitution and elimination right so that's about out of the three reactions two important reactions of alkyl halides number one nucleophilic substitution reaction some 13 14 examples we have seen and then mechanism sn1 sn2 and now elimination reaction next is reaction with the metals reaction with the metals that is the third one reaction with the metals how alkyl halide reacting with the metals one most important case is an alkyl halide interacting with the metallic magnesium an alkyl halide interacting with the metallic magnesium we get a grignard reagent the reaction happens in dry ether it is a organo metallic compound it is a organo metallic compound an organic part carbon sigma bonded to magnesium and is called a sigma complex it is a sigma complex organo metallic whenever an organic part linked to a metal atom it is called organo metallic there are three varieties sigma complex sigma pi complex sigma pi complex sigma complex pi complex sigma pi complex grignard reagent is a sigma complex organometallic compound which was <coughs> discovered by victor grignard known after his name and this is the general formula rmgx grignard reagent grignard reagent one of the highly popular reagent in organic chemistry involved in many 
synthesis of many organic compounds. That is the speciality of Grignard reagent, which is obtained by acting alkyl halide with the magnesium in dry ether. You get a Grignard reagent, the name of this reagent, ethyl magnesium bromide. Alkyl magnesium halide. Alkyl magnesium halide. Right? It has got a highly polar carbon magnesium bond. Carbon magnesium bond is highly polar. While this bond is essentially ionic in nature. This bond is essentially ionic in nature. While this bond is covalent bond but highly polar. That high polarity of carbon halogen, sorry, carbon magnesium bond is the speciality of Grignard reagent with which it is able to trigger many reactions. But remember that bond is highly sensitive to protonating agents. Suppose you take an acid or any substance which even feebly can produce protons. Any substance which can feebly give us the character, the carbon magnesium bond is highly sensitive. So, Grignard reagent must be used in dry condition. Even moisture, even moisture is, is actually sensitive to Grignard reagent. Grignard reagent is sensitive even to moisture. So, moisture, water, that means water, alcohol, or, or any compound which even feebly acidic in nature, Grignard reagent is sensitive. That's why Grignard reagent we are using in the dry condition. That's why dry ether is used. What happens if Grignard reagent work with the water? If Grignard reagent works with the water, what will happen? Not only water, any compound which can produce uh, acidic hydrogen. You see that R MgX when interacting with the water, even moisture, it's breaking like this minus and plus. It is breaking here plus and minus. This R minus will interact with the H. You get a, a hydrocarbon and MgOHX. You get a hydrocarbon, say alkane is obtained. So, Grignard reagent which is highly sensitive to such molecules may be water, may be amine, may be alcohol, may be acids, whatever it is. It's highly sensitive to such groups. So, you definitely can expect some related questions. A molecule given to you where there is a Grignard sensitive group is available and uh, they ask you to find out what you deal with, uh, how do you handle it. So, be very careful. Grignard reagent works on moisture free condition, works on acid free environment or any such a molecule having such a group also will be disturbing Grignard reagent, please be very careful. Okay, so that is about uh, Grignard reagent which is obtained by action of alkyl halide with magnesium in dry ether. <coughs> and in fact, uh, if, you, if you want to produce hydrocarbon, that is the best way also. If you want to get RH, this is the best way. If you have Grignard reagent, simply treated with the water, you will get an alkane or that corresponding hydrocarbon. Okay. That is a way to produce if you want to. Next to reaction, Woods reaction, very famous and a popular reaction, all of you know, Woods reaction. Woods coupling reaction, alkyl halide treated with a metallic sodium, alkyl halide treated with a metallic sodium in dry ether in dry ether there will be a reaction like this NaX out to NaX out this R part and this R part will connect you will get RR symmetrical higher alkanes are produced in Woods reaction Woods reaction predominantly gives you even number of carbon atom products, symmetrical higher alkane. If you take methyl chloride, you get ethane. If you take ethyl chloride, you get 2 plus 2, 4 carbon atom, butane, like that. So, methyl chloride, you get uh, ethane, ethyl chloride, you butane, propyl chloride, you get uh, hexane, like that. 
So double the number of carbon atom product is obtained in Wood's reaction. It is a symmetric coupling reaction. Wood's reaction. Very popular one known to all. Right? So that's all regarding the reactions of haloalkanes. That's all regarding the reactions of haloalkanes. Now we are on to the reactions of haloarenes. Reactions of haloarenes. Very, very important. First one, nucleophilic substitution reaction. SN reaction. SN reaction. Very important to note down. The first comment to what we find in the textbook. Very important to note down. And that in fact is a popular one regarding aryl halides. Aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reaction. In fact, uh, it is not the typical reactions of aryl halides. Aryl halides are not uh, promoting nucleophilic substitution. Rather, they are interested in electrophilic substitution reaction. Aromatic compounds are well known for ESR reactions. What about SN reaction? Hardly they give SN reaction. Or the reactivity towards SN reaction is very very less. Aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution. Why? Multiple reasons. Reason number one, resonance effect. You can see the resonance effect in chlorobenzene. For example, the lone pair of electrons from chlorine involved in plus R effect due to which there is a carbon chlorine double bond. There is a partial double bond character between carbon and chlorine. So it is not easy to break that carbon chlorine bond. It's not so easy to break that carbon chlorine bond because of partial double bond character due to resonance. So you can't break it easily. The way you are doing alkyl halides are breaking. The way alkyl halide the bond is breaking. It is not possible to see this aryl halide the carbon halogen bond. It is not breaking easily. It is not possible as there is a partial double bond character carbon halogen bond cannot be broken easily number one reason number one reason number two this is sp3 carbon while this carbon is sp2 carbon so what sir so what very simple sp2 carbon is more electronegative Compared to sp3 carbon where there is 25 percentage s character, sp2 carbon having 33 percentage s character. When the s character increases, electronegativity increases. When the electronegativity increases, the electron density more closely pulled towards the carbon. Bond length will decrease. There is a lower bond length in carbon halogen in aryl halides compared to alkyl halides. Compared to alkyl halides, bond length decreases. If you, if you simply compare the bond length in alkyl and aryl, this is bond length in uh, what do you call haloarene. In haloarene, bond length comes average 169, where haloalkene it is 177. Approximately 10 units difference in picometer. 10 units difference in the bond length in picometer in alkyl halides if it is coming 177 180 range here it is 169 170 range why the electron cloud is more pulled towards carbon why here it is sp2 carbon so what it is more electronegative pull the electron density more close towards it and the bond length decreases so, as I said, multiple reasons, aryl halides are less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reaction. Multiple reasons, reason number one, resonance. Hence, there is a partial double bond character. Number two, hybridization, difference in hybridization, sp2 hybridization. So, it is more electronegative and the bond length decreases. Number three, number three, instability of phenyl cation instability of phenyl cation it's not easy to talk the halogen being broken 
it's not easy to talk the halogen being broken and you get a positive center here phenyl carbocation is unstable as it momentarily loses aromaticity so you cannot talk about formation of a cation without talking about formation of cation we cannot talk about sn1 reaction that means sn1 reaction is completely ruled out in aryl halides sn1 reaction is ruled out in aryl halides so the chances sn reaction it is sn1 or sn2 so if it is a sn reaction it's only sn2 possible we cannot talk about sn1 because phenyl carbocation never formed as it loses the aromaticity and you cannot stabilize the you, you don't find the carbon carbocation being stabilized so instability of phenyl carbocation another reason and finally a possible repulsion a possible repulsion how we can think about a nucleophile attack uh, benzene benzene itself is electron rich you know isn't it benzene itself the ring is electron rich and this is also electron rich how 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 we can assume the nucleophile attack on benzene it's not possible there will be a repulsion with the nucleophile so like this we can have multiple point of statement suggesting or explaining or reasoning why aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards sn reaction so four reactions four reasons quoted in the ncrt Number one, partial double bond character due to resonance. Number two, lower bond length due to sp2 hybridized state of carbon atom. And number three, instability of the phenyl carbocation. And number four, a repulsion with the nucleophile. Which doesn't mean they don't give the reaction. They may give the reaction only under elevated conditions. They may give SN reaction only under elevated conditions. You see how they give SN reaction? This is an SN reaction, but the reaction happens only under drastic conditions. A high temperature, 623 Kelvin and a pressure, 380 M pressure, chlorobenzene, chlorine is replaced by OH group. So chlorobenzene fused with the NaOH. Chlorobenzene fused with the NaOH at a high temperature and pressure, elevated condition, you will get chlorine replaced by uh, the group and you get initially sodium phenoxide. This is converted to sodium phenoxide. Chlorine replaced by ONA and that upon acidification, you get the phenol. O minus upon acidification, you get a phenol. Right? A very popular reaction, Dow's process. Hope you remember the reaction. Commercially, the reaction conducted is called a Dow's process. So, chlorobenzene may be converted to phenol by fusing with NaOH under drastic conditions. Is that okay? Fine. Yes. <clears throat> Another important point uh, discussed uh, parallelly over the region, it is nothing but the presence of electron withdrawing group like NO2 at ortho para position will increase the reactivity of haloarene towards SN reaction. Please be very clear, clear towards SN reaction. The reactivity of chlorobenzene towards SN reaction can be enhanced by the presence of electron withdrawing group like NO2 coming at ortho para positions. I repeat, please be very meticulous and clear. The reactivity of chlorobenzene towards SN reaction, nucleophilic substitution reaction, enhanced by the presence of electron withdrawing group, example nitro group, at ortho para positions. So here you can see, instead of chlorobenzene, we take a para nitrochlorobenzene. You see the condition is much better. 
now the reaction happens much comfortably it is treated with naoh not at 623 300 atm pressure it is 443 kelvin so the conditions suppressed that means the reactivity increases you can see chlorine is replaced to oh group in a much better way it's due to the presence of nitro group so what if there is two nitro group present what if there is two nitro group present you see that both ortho and para position occupied by nitro group so it is ortho para dinitrochlorobenzene now the reaction is again elevated the reaction the reactivity increased the reaction happens in a much better way so earlier it was 623 kelvin temperature here it is 443 kelvin temperature here it is only 368 kelvin temperature where chlorine is replaced by oh group in a much easier way this is what commented and what if it is three nitro group present suppose all the ortho para positions are occupied by nitro group what will be the scenario you see ortho para all positions occupied by nitro group simply warming with water chlorine is replaced to oh group and you get picric acid 246 trinitrophenol picric acid please be very careful we are talking about SN reactivity, reactivity of uh, aromatic compound towards SN reaction and that is due to the influence of electron withdrawing groups only at ortho para position. You look at the meticulous comment made by NCRT, the effect is pronounced when NO2 group is introduced at ortho para position, however no effect on reactivity is observed by the presence of electron withdrawing group at meta position no use if no2 comes at meta position no use the effect is pronounced only at ortho para position why sir many of you know why many of you know why and is beautifully described by ncrt but uh, seems to be uh, not easy to understand from the way it is presented over all structures given like this but if you concentrate on it, the area which i am commenting it will be very easy you see at para isomer nitro group at para position nitro group at para position and uh, nucleophile attack on this region and you get the intermediate intermediate formed in between and don't you see, don't you see, there is a minus here, there is a minus here, and there is a minus here. Look at that. And that, that, that uh, intensity of minus, this minus intensity decides the stability of the intermediate. Now you can very well see the minus coming here is withdrawn by nitro group. Nitro group is electron withdrawing group. Nitro group is available here and one of the resonating structure minus is coming here. So this minus electron density withdrawn by nitro group and thereby stabilizing the intermediate and thereby the reaction is much more facilitated. So this minus charge is withdrawn by this group at a para position. Look at ortho position, ortho isomer nitro group is available here. The nucleophile attacks and you get an intermediate. The minus is here, here and here. And you see the minus here is, the minus here on the charge on this carbon minus is withdrawn by nitro group at ortho position. So you find in the resonating structures, you find a minus charge coming at ortho para position only. The minus charge coming at ortho position, minus charge coming at para position, ortho position, ortho, para, ortho. So when nitro group comes at ortho or para respectively, it is able to give the, the, the effective electron withdrawing character. The electron withdrawing nature is performed at ortho para position. It's not possible at the meta position. Look at the meta isomer. Look at this is the meta position. Look at the meta isomer. Minus is here. Minus is here. Minus is here. You don't get a minus charge. 
where the nitro group is look at the nitro group this is meta do you find a minus you don't find a minus charge coming in the resonating structures at a meta position that means at a meta position there is no effective electron withdrawing character hope you understand so the electron withdrawing nature of no2 pronounced only at ortho para position not at meta position and due to which when they are coming at ortho para position the reactivity towards sn reaction increases for halo arenes i hope the picture is clear is it okay fine a very important from the chapter and in fact that is asked as a question here in the box you can see now now on to esr reaction this in fact is the typical reaction given by halo arenes halo arenes are not famous known for sn reaction they are known for esr reaction aromatic electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction aryl halides are well known for electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction that's so all aromatic compounds are like that so how they give aromatic substitution reaction they may give halogenation reaction they may give nitration sulfonation friedel craft reactions all and there is an important point regarding the nature of the halogen atom already present this halogen is slightly deactivating the chlorine present in chlorobenzene is slightly deactivating and you have learned in the chapter hydrocarbons even though they are slightly deactivating normally deactivating groups are meta directing but chlorine atom in chlorobenzene even though slightly deactivating it is ortho para directing it is deactivating due to minus i effect chlorine is deactivating due to minus i effect if you take chlorobenzene if you take chlorobenzene chlorine is electronegative atom and it perform minus i effect it is performing minus i effect due to which it is slightly deactivating but the resonance effect is plus r effect so r effect is plus and i effect is minus due to minus i effect it is slightly deactivating while due to plus r effect it is ortho para directing so orientation is governed by resonance effect and the reactivity is governed by minus i effect so if a question comes which is more reactive benzene or chlorobenzene the answer is benzene chlorobenzene is slightly less reactive compared to benzene why due to minus i effect of chlorine it is slightly deactivating in nature usually deactivating molecules deactivating characters are meta directing but here even though it is deactivating slightly it is not meta directing it is ortho para directing because the orientation is governed by plus r effect due to the presence of lone pair of electrons in chlorine it is plus r effect so please be very careful about this particular point okay and in fact it is giving various electrophilic substitution reaction like uh, number 1 halogenation number 1 halogenation reaction halogenation reaction you see chlorobenzene treated with the cl2 anhydrous fecl3 cl2 cl2 break like cl minus cl plus and this cl minus is absorbed by the lewis acid and we get the electrophile cl plus attacked by benzene ring and you get dichlorobenzene 14 dichlorobenzene 12 dichlorobenzene the chlorine may be coming here or here ortho para positions you get 12 dichlorobenzene and 14 dichlorobenzene which is 14 being major product okay 
Number two, nitration reaction. Number two, nitration reaction. Concentrated nitric acid, sulfuric acid will produce the electrophile NO2 plus. How do you get NO2 plus? This is nitric acid which act as a base here and this is sulfuric acid which act as an acid here. It is going to cleave here. It is going to cleave here. This is minus and this is plus. This is plus and this is minus. A OH and H plus will be out as water and you get NO2 plus. This is the electrophile. Nitronium ion. The electrophile attacked by the benzene ring and you get uh, ortho nitro para nitro 1 chloro 2 nitro benzene or 1 chloro 4 nitro benzene which in fact is the major product and here the electrophile is nitronium ion so halogenation nitration right Sulfonation reaction, sulfonation reaction, chlorobenzene treated with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid which will produce SO3, SO3 act as the electrophile, fuming sulfuric acid can liberate SO3 gas and that act as the electrophile and that is attacked by benzene and you get chlorobenzene turn like this, there is chlorine here and here you have there you have SO3 SO3 and hydrogen this is the intermediate form at ortho position and para position ortho and para position now this bond is breaking and you get a the ring getting the aromaticity back and the proton go and this will absorb H plus from the solution and the net result will be ortho sulfonic acid product you get a 1 chloro sorry 1 2 2 chloro benzene sulfonic acid I have explained what is happening at ortho position this is SO3 added to benzene ring you get a arenium cation intermediate. Last step will be deprotonation. And O minus will capture H plus from the solution. Or you can see H plus comes over here. And finally you get SO3H. 2 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid. Similarly at a para position this will be the major product. Ortho para position will be occupied by the, the new incoming group. So halogenation. Chloronium ion act as the electrophile, nitration NO2 plus act as electrophile, sulfonation SO3 act as electrophile. And now Friedel Craft reaction. Friedel Craft reaction. You know there are two Friedel Craft reaction. Friedel Craft alkylation and acylation. First one Friedel Craft alkylation reaction. Chlorobenzene treated with the CS3Cl anhydrous AlCl3. It is going to break here minus chlorine absorbed by this and you get CS3 plus. That is the electrophile. And that is attacked by the benzene ring. You get a 1 chloro, 1 chloro 2 methyl benzene. 1 chloro 2 methyl benzene or 1 chloro 4 methyl benzene. You get a chlorotoluene. You get chlorotoluene, orthochlorotoluene and parachlorotoluene. Friedel Craft alkylation. CS3 group R plus. CS3 plus R plus is the electrophile. While Friedel Craft acylation, this bond is breaking here. Cl minus withdrawn by the uh, Lewis acid and you get C plus. This is the electrophile which is attacked by the benzene ring and there you get acetophenone 2 chloro acetophenone 1 2 2 chloro acetophenone and 1 2 3 4 4 chloro acetophenone you get a, an aromatic ketone friedel craft acylation here the electrophile is acyl carbocation 
here the electrophile is alkyl carbocation all these are electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction which involve three steps which already we, we have learned formation of electrophile attack of electrophile to get an arrhenium cation and removal of proton to regain the aromaticity and the final product is obtained here when chlorine already present even though the reactivity slightly decreases the new incoming electrophile it attached to ortho para positions predominantly or in fact the major product will be normal cases para product okay so that's about aromatic substitution reactions in aryl halides there also there is a question about the reactivity of chlorobenzene and about the orientation effect of chlorobenzene okay next is reaction with the metals and is again a repetition reaction fittig reaction woods reaction woods fittig reaction all of you know woods reaction this is woods reaction this is woods reaction and if the same thing happens with the aryl halide if you take chlorobenzene if you take chlorobenzene if a similar ha reaction happens with the chlorobenzene it will be called a fittig reaction to nacl out and this benzene ring coupled with this benzene ring you get a biphenyl you get a biphenyl or diphenyl this reaction is called a fittig reaction so reaction of alkyl halide with the metallic sodium in dry ether you get rr that is woods reaction if the similar reaction happens with the aryl halide it will be called fittig reaction and the combination of the two is called woods fittig reaction this is called fittig reaction fittig reaction fittig reaction while a combination of the two can be called as woods fittig reaction combination of the two rx with the two metallic sodium x benzene in presence of dry ether the reaction happening like this to nax out this r coupled with the benzene ring that will be termed as woods fittig reaction this will be termed as woods fittig reaction if you take our uh, cs3 group you get toluene cs3 cl with the chlorobenzene you get toluene this is woods fittig reaction all these are coupling reactions so for alkyl halides woods reaction aryl halides fittig reaction alkyl and aryl halides combination it is woods fittig reaction is that fine right that's about the reactions of halo arenes and there is a tail end story in the chapter polyhalogen compounds polyhalogen compounds a few molecules which only factual point which you need to review only factual points you need to review first one methylene chloride dichloromethane methylene chloride dichloromethane used as a solvent paint remover propellant in aerosols manufacturing of drugs metal cleaning finishing solvent it is harmful to central nervous system it may affect uh, hearing and vision higher level causes dizziness nausea tingling numbness direct skin contact can cause burning sensation 
it may it may affect the cornea if it is coming to direct contact with the eyes while trichloromethane chloroform trichloromethane very popular compound chloroform trichloromethane ch cl3 used for the production of rayon refrigerant refrigerant a talk may be about refrigerant see the code given r22 you may practice finding the uh, formula of uh, um, refrigerant codes given right you must try to practice finding the formula for example r22 r22 there are many methods i will tell you one simple method to find out the formula if such a coding is given if it is given r22 what is the formula of this freon freon you know chloro fluoro carbons are called freons it's a very good fluid in refrigerant systems right what will be the chemical formula of 22 very simple uh, several methods are there let me tell you one simple method if you take 22 add with a add with a value 90 it is called a 90 method number 90 method 22 add with 90 you will get uh, how much uh, 90 100 102 you get 102 when you get such a number the first number refer to number of carbon atom second number refer to number of hydrogen atom third number refer to number of fluorine atom and if any free valency coming fill with the chlorine so whatever refrigerant code given to you let me tell you a simple way to find out the formula suppose it is a code given 22 asking which is the formula what is the formula four choices given to you you just add a 22 take that number 22 add with a 90 whatever code given to you add with a 90 22 plus 90 it is 100 and is it 22 plus 112 no sorry sorry <laughs> it is 90 100 112 i thought it is 12 okay okay 90 plus 22 112 right if you get that 112 number first digit one stands for carbon Second digit 1 stands for hydrogen. Third digit 2 stands for fluorine. That means carbon, 1 carbon, 4 valency. There is 1 hydrogen, 1 hydrogen, 2 fluorine. Now 1 valency is free. That will be occupied by chlorine. Like that. So whatever the code given to you, take that coding. Add 90. You get one number. First value will be number of carbon atom. Second value will be number of hydrogen atom. Third value will be number of fluorine atom. Suppose you are getting, suppose you are getting 2, 2, 3 for example. Suppose you are getting 2, 2, 3. You are getting a freon coding given. Add 90, you get 2, 2, 3. How is going to be? First number refer to carbon atom. This refer to hydrogen atom. This refer to fluorine atom. And the remaining will be chlorine. That means there are two carbon, right? There are two hydrogen, right? And there is three fluorine, right? One fluorine here, one fluorine here, again one fluorine here, and one chlorine will be like this. So this probably stands the formula for that uh, free. Whether such a free one exists or not, that is none of my business at this point. Hope you get the idea which you must practice if the formula given how to get the code and code given how to get the formula even though it is not a part and parcel of our syllabus probably sometimes we can expect a question general question based on which easily you can work out so whatever is the code given add 90 you get a number first value carbon second value hydrogen third value fluorine and the remaining valency satisfied by chlorine I hope it is clear. I just commented about it when I saw that uh, Freon coding R22. Coming back to chloroform point, our discussion was chloroform. Our discussion was chloroform. It was once used as general anesthetic. It was once used as general anesthetic. Nowadays we are not using. 
Nowadays we are using less toxic uh, ether or some more advanced materials. Inhaling chloroform vapors will affect the central nervous system. Breathing about 900 parts per million cause dizziness, fatigue, headache. This was a previous question. Chronic exposure of which of the substances problem creating to kidneys, <clears throat> liver, etc. Chronic chloroform exposure may cause damage to liver, kidney, etc. Chloroform can be oxidized in air, giving poisonous phosgene gas. It is always kept stored in colored bottles, always filled to the brim of the bottle. It's not advisable to take halfway chloroform away and uh, uh, keep it there and use it later on. It's dangerous. Because air trapped may cause oxidation of chloroform, giving to phos poisonous phosgene. Phosgene, carbonyl chloride. Carbonyl chloride, which is poisonous gas. So that's about uh, chloroform. Then triiodomethane, iodoform, triiodomethane, iodoform, CHI3, iodoform. It was used as antiseptic, but the antiseptic action is due to free iodine generated, not by iodoform, having objectionable smell. Then CCL4, carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. Used as refrigerant and propellant. Manufacturing of refrigerant and propellant. In the pharmaceutical industry, solvent. Widely used as a cleaning fluid, degreasing agent, spot remover, fire extinguisher. It is used as fire extinguisher under the trade name pyrene. It, it's a heavy molecule, will dump over the fire. It is, it is used as a fire extinguisher under the trade name pyrene, pyrene, CCL4. Heavy compound will dump over the fire and will cut interaction with the air. Chronic exposure may cause liver cancer. Some side effects, dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting. Exposure to heavy, severe conditions, stupor, coma, unconscious or sometimes even death. And a higher concentration may affect the ozone layer, may cause ozone layer depletion and similar things are explained. Next one, freons. Freons. Freons are chloro fluorocarbons prions are chlorofluorocarbons chlorofluorocarbon compounds of methane and ethane called prions they are extremely stable unreactive non toxic non corrosive and easily liquefiable gases in fact we don't find any problem with the prions in our environmental region but as all of you know, when the prion reaches to the stratospheric region, they produce free radicals by UV light. And one chlorine free radical generated from prion may spoil a million of ozone molecules because it is a chain reaction. So the main problem of prion is once it reaches the stratospheric region. Okay. Prion 12, CCL2F2, you can verify that formula and coding. 12, uh, what to do? 12 plus 90, you get a number. 102. One, one, 1 carbon, 0 hydrogen, 2 fluorine, remaining chlorine. 1 carbon, 0 hydrogen, 2 fluorine and the remaining 2 chlorine. They are produced by Schwartz reaction. Hope you remember Schwartz reaction. Alkyl chloride bromide converted to fluoride by treating with the metal fluorides. Schwartz reaction. And finally, a talk on DDT. Finally, a talk on DDT. First chlorinated organic insecticide. In 1939, Paul Muller found the effectiveness of DDT as an insecticide. It is PP- dichloro, diphenyl, trichloro, ethane, DDT. 
it is uh, found to be effective against mosquito that spread malaria typhus many insects developed resistance to ddt immune system change by the continuous use of an insecticide you are learning in the uh, biology related topic yes they are found to be high toxicity towards fish DDT is not metabolized very rapidly by animals. Instead, it is deposited and stored in the fatty tissue. Many countries banned using DDT. This is DDT. This is DDT. P, P dash. What is meant by P, P dash? P4 para. P4 para. P, P dash. P, P dash. P, P dash. Dichloro. Diphenyl. Trichloro. Ethane. This is ethane. Dichloro, diphenyl, trichloro, ethane. Right? Whenever you get such molecules, try to investigate the structural features of that molecule. What is the hybridization coming? How many lone pairs are coming? How many pi bonds are? How many benzene rings are there? Etc. Etc. Try to review the characteristic features because whenever such a molecule is there in the textbook uh, content, there can be related questions. It may be regarding the hybridized state of the carbon atoms. It may be regarding how many chlorine are there, how many lone pair are there, how many sigma bond are there, how many pi bond are there. Try to get the uh, molecular, con molecular connectivity details of such molecules referred in the text. Right? That probably is the end of our uh, chapter. That is halo alkane, halo arene. Let me remind you, the various area which we have came through all, classification of various haloalkane, haloarine, nomenclature, isomerism, related questions, preparation of haloalkane step by step, many methods we have seen, reaction from alcohols, reaction uh, by the addition of uh, halogen, alkyl halide, Swartz reaction, Fingelstein reaction, Sanmeyer's reaction, so many, so many reactions. Then properties, properties, physical properties, solubility, boiling point, melting point, etc. Then chemical reactivity, main, mainly SN reaction, SN1, SN2, elimination reaction, right? Reaction with the metals, Grignard reagent, Woods reaction, Fittig reaction, Woods Fittig reaction. SN reaction for aryl halides, many points related. Electro ESR reaction, electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction for haloarenes, many related points. And finally, polyhalogen compounds. There we conclude the chapter haloalkane, haloarene. We will meet with uh, another session, another class with another chapter. Till then, bye, see you, take care.